Hi guys, this is a quick video showing you how to get started with Atomizer by Yahoo. Atomizer is a framework used to generate atomic CSS classes. And if you don't know what atomic CSS is, look at my previous video because I talk about it a bit. Um, so to get started, I've used the quick start guide. So what I've done is I've copied this, I've cloned the repo called atomizer-examples and run these commands. Now before you run these, please make sure you have Node.js installed because they won't work without it. So basically what I did was I ran this command in my terminal. Uh, I'm not going to do it now because I've done it already. But after I copied the repo, I did these three commands and they all worked. Well, these two commands. I'm going to do this now to start the server. So I copy that and paste it into here. And it runs on gulp. Um, so the server should start immediately and this is what I get. Um, so as you can see, it's a simple HTML page, not anything majorly styled. So let's look at the code behind it. So we have a font size 30 pixel and a background color of primary, which is in the Atom CSS over here. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, please look at my previous tutorial. Um, I talk about what these forward slashes are and why they exist. Um, but for now, I'm going to go through how Atomizer works. So if you haven't already, the reference section uh, shows you what the um, abbreviations actually stand for. So what I'm going to do in this document is add a few more abbreviations and show you, show you how they work. As I mentioned before, I'm not a huge fan of the capital letters here. I prefer my CSS to be lower class. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to use capital letters because Atomizer um, doesn't work with lowercase letters. So let's try margin, sorry, capital M, margin top, uh, 3EM. Now before I save, if you look in this file, there's no margin top whatsoever. What Atomizer does is once I save this, it adds it to this um, somewhere. Yeah, here we go. So it adds it to this document. So each new atomic class that you type in gets added automatically to whatever folder you set. Now you can change the folder in the gob file. Sorry, grunt file.js. I'm used to gulp. And you can change whatever folder it goes to. But for now, I'm going to stick with the defaults in the example file. And let's have a look at the resulting page. And as you can see here, it has a margin of 30, what was I, EM pixels? 3 EM. And that can be changed to whatever you want. And also, deleting classes deletes them in the atomic CSS file. So now there's no margin top three. And the file goes back to normal. Um, so let's add a few more classes. Let's try adding a color, which is a capital C of purple. Um, let's make the font size here a bit bigger because it's small. Font size 3 em. And let's try something funky. What's a really funky class we can use? No, and then are there gradients? No gradients. Um, transitions. No, it just do hovers. So let's try a crazy hover class. Let's use good old display none hover. Save. And that's all should be added here. So display none hover and color purple. And go back to the page. Okay, and it flashes again. Um, so that's as simple as that. Um, I've been using atomic classes for a while, so I know some of the classes off the top of my head, the class name, sorry. But if you are unfamiliar with them, this is a great resource for typing in names and knowing what they are. Um, as I mentioned previously, I'm not a huge fan of the capital letters. So whenever I use this for a project, I make my own. But for a beginner using atomic CSS, this is a great way to learn. So I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. And if you liked it, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more.